Alright, so Bernie, you the man, Bernie, huh? Woo! 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 Thank you, thank you. Bernie has gone on. A lot of people, when their careers end, and Kurt too, they, they, they don't know what to do with themselves. Kurt's very involved with uh, computer games and, and war games, which of course, if you know Kurt, you know he's dedicated to the history of, of this country and wars. And Bernie's become a, a musical savant. Uh, last year was the number one album, record, what was it? Record, yeah. <laughs> number one record. Well, I have number one hit uh, track on the album. Uh, the album got nominated for a Latin Grammy. A Latin Grammy. That's Hi, Bernie. Let's, let's talk about your career. There, as you sit here, and someone in the audience is saying, Bernie, what, what do you most remember, remember, uh, remember about your career? Yeah. What would you say? Uh, wow, so many moments. Kind of hard to uh, choose one, though. I would think, you know, personally. How about, the, how about like the silliest thing that ever happened? Funniest moment. Do people know about the World Series? Give us, get us inside that clubhouse or on a plane or with the personalities. These people pay good money to be here today. They want to find out some of, <laughs> find out some of, the, uh, some of those crazy stories. So I don't have any crazy stories to tell you, though, but I do have uh, a few ones. Uh, there's one uh, actually pretty funny. I, I said it a few times. Uh, I was playing in Oakland. Uh, and uh, this happened to me, you know, it's got this rap about being, you know, a little aloof and a little loose and uh, not being sure where I'm in, uh, you know, certain situations. Uh, there was this situation that I was playing, uh, facing Mike Oquist, bases loaded in Oakland, and uh, I'm fighting, fighting him off, you know, he throws me a couple pitches, I fall off, count 2-2, two, two. he throws me a fork on the dirt, and I let it go, and I start walking to first, thinking that I'm... Yeah, walk. Sure. Uh, all of a sudden, I feel you know the crowd, you know, yelling and everything, and I'm looking. I look at uh, Don Shulock, he's the umpire. He's like his hands, you know, arms crossed, like going like this. <laughs> so I'm coming back. Uh, obviously, you know, Oakland fans could be kind of rowdy. Uh, next pitch he throws, I hit it off. Hit it off for a grand yeah, slam. Yeah. So, <laughs> they were sure. be right there at you, walking. <laughs> so there was actually Bernie being Bernie before Manny was Manny. Exactly. No, no, no. Not, with, not with all the antics, though. No. Oh. There's, only, <laughs> there's only one Manny. I don't even know if there's that one. I have a Manny. Right. <laughs> Let's bring the lights up because this is uh, really a chance for you folks out there to, to ask us and certainly Bernie and Kurt any questions. Good crowd today. We appreciate you being here, and we certainly uh, appreciate you. Yeah. 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 Right here, here you go in front. I got Ricardo from Daytona Beach. I want to say hello to the panel. Good to see you guys up there. Kurt, do you remember me from last year? <laughs> uh, uh, ask your question, and I probably will. Okay. I asked you for your take on um, how you felt about the fans from Philly versus oh. the fans from Boston. Yeah, yeah. So my wife, the Red Sox fans were very happy. Uh, on the other hand, I'd like to give you another chance to be in Carter, the so your wife's in the middle, where are you sitting? Oh, you're right sitting here. in the middle too? Alright, right. I thought maybe you were on the other side there. <laughs> okay. Hi right, Kurt, what do you think? Philly fans, Red Sox fans? Well, I mean, Crocky, we spent uh, so, uh, one good year in Philly. Um, <laughs> thanks to Joe Clark. It's a great marriage. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they're different. They're different. Uh, Red Sox baseball is is uh, a way of life in, in Boston. It is um, it is it's Catholicism and Red Sox baseball, and not necessarily in that order up in the New England area. Um, and for me, uh, I I treasure the fact that I got to experience that. There's nothing like that, and and that is uh, uh, something that every athlete should be able to, to participate and, and get a feel for. In Philadelphia, it is, Philadelphia is the epitome of blue collar. And, you know, and, and the, the argument I make is Jim Eisenreich, who was an insanely popular player when we were in Philadelphia, he was very good too. Uh, there were some other players that probably weren't as good that became fan favorites um, because they were quirky and had great personalities. And in Boston and New York, those players get booed. They don't care about your quirky personality and your funny guy. They want, you well, know. You guys had a left fielder out there pretty quirky. Yeah. Well, he can hit. No. That bottom line, you, you produce in Boston or get booed. And it's, they want production. They want wins. And it's obviously a, 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 a mental a state of mind change over the last, you know, 10 years. Well, I mean, having grown up in that area, it was not always that way. The religion no. was hardly Red Sox-based. In fact, prior to that, it was Celtic-based. And, and even prior to that, it was 
it was Bruins based. And when they had new owners come in, they changed the culture. They they embraced the, the, the nation that the Red Sox fans were, as opposed to they used to have a closed door policy. It became very open door. So so that changed. But when you succeed, like you say you did, you can be. I mean, you're worshipped up there, carte blanche for the rest of your life. And same with Bernie. You know what it's like to win in a big city. Absolutely. When you don't win in those cities, you can ask to be traded to get the heck out of there. It's not a great experience. Yeah, it's not a lot of fun. Not a lot of fun. I was there in 91 and 92 when right. the team was not as good. And <laughs> oh, I know. I played 16 years and fi figured two weren't good. And, <laughs> dude, I am telling you, when it's not good, it is not good. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> Out of that 16 years, those two really stunk. That's great. Should have played on some of the ones I played on. Got to quit the game. All right, who's we get over here? Uh, Joe from Orlando, originally from Brooklyn. Uh, just a couple of quick questions. Uh, the first one, um, obviously, is about the Yankees. Um, not signing um, Johnny Damon back. Is that just a sign that them unwilling to pay him? Is that just a sign of hey, we have to take care of Jeter down the road, and maybe you know a guy like Carl Crawford who is probably going to be on the market next year. And the second question is for Cricket there. Uh, when you were in your All Star game against uh, Randy Johnson, yeah. what were you really thinking when that ball fell over your head? Same thing I th thought every game. Nothing. <laughs> So let's get it over with in nine innings. Let's go home. <laughs> so full of crap. <laughs> he is so full of crap. You know, he, he played that whole dumb way. Well, he is a dumb hit, but he played that. <laughs> he played that. He tried to play that dumb guy thing, you know, the same way Manny did when I went to Boston. He had to outsmart the stupid pitchers. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, I had to dumb down to their level. Some of those, yeah, but they're, they're, don't let them fool you. They, they win. If you don't play the game at that level and be that good on just pure natural ability, no one has ever done that. Right. 300 guys, hitters, right? 300 yeah. hitters. Those guys. Well, he uh, he did it the way he, he got his what he got a hit to get his uh, career average in Baltimore. I wanted to quit when you started. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. Quick, quickly, why don't you tell us just how your career ended? It was really it's a weird. It's kind of an odd story. Oh. So, it's, it's not a crux really, story. It's not. It's a crux story. It's a crux story. But, but it wasn't my idea. It was uh, uh, Ozzy Guillen, Robin Ventura was the one. And, and Ozzy's Twittering now, so you all can join him in that four, language, four, four word love fest. So, four letter love fest. I'm sure he's going to partake in this it. This is a quick story. All right, this is a quick story. All right, so they told me, get a hit and leave. Get a hit, walk off the field and leave. So I said, okay, that'd be a great idea. Well, we were in Boston when this plan came about, but I was 0 for three games, four at bats, sets 12, 0 for 12 in Boston, 0 for Friday in Baltimore, 0 for Saturday in Baltimore, and then Sunday, I'm like, holy crap, I'll never get another hit. <laughs> and so, Doug Jones was pitching uh, in Baltimore at the time, he was a closer for the Phillies a year before, my teammate, and Saturday night, I said, hey, I need to uh, get a hit so I can quit, and he said, well, I asked him who's pitching Sunday, he said, Scott Erickson, I said, let me know if he'll throw me something down the middle of my first at bat so I, I can get the hell out of here. And so he tipped his hat in the dugout before I went up the bat, and so I thought he was going to throw me, and he did. And I mean, I got the living, you know what, jammed out of it. Hit a blooper over the shortstop's head and said, thank God this is over. And I went home. No, no, I mean, he, he went home. He walked, yeah. he got to first base, yeah. and he left the game. Ozzy Guillen had a bottle Left, the of Left. First inning, yeah. I'm right. gone. I was home in this, I, was, I lived in West Virginia to have like two and a half hours from Baltimore, and I was home by the seventh inning because we got beat like 13 to 2. <laughs> <laughs> seventh inning, I was kicked back to the recliner watching the rest of the game. And I heard that I was injured. <laughs> I didn't play golf the next day, so that wasn't too bad off. And Crookie told me that his agent called him after about eight days and said, you haven't been playing. Are you hurt or something? He said, no, I retired eight days ago. That's what he told his agent. 